thank you for coming after lunch, right? So I will try to, I know how it is going to a presentation right after lunch, so I will try to be as energetic as possible, right? So you have come to something called exploit core agile practices at the program level. And so what we're going to do is talk about how you can very quickly and very simply use some of the basic fundamental agile practices that you've learned how to do on teams and quickly extend that so you're working on multiple teams, sometimes up to 20 or 30, and delivering stuff across the whole program. All righty. And you'll have to excuse the visuals. My partner, Chris Wagner, created this thing in an application called Prezi, which is awesome. It looks really cool. Things swirl, or swirl around, but it doesn't, it doesn't behave well with that projector. So it might look kind of fuzzy. If I'm going to be able looking for your reaction, because if you look confused or something doesn't appear right up there, just give me the secret signal, and, 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 <laughs> right? and or I'll just keep going on. All right. Um, my name is Jeff Lopez Stite. I work for Solutions IQ, which is an agile consultancy, actually now the world's biggest agile consultancy. We're based in Redmond, Washington in the USA. Uh, we have a sizable local presence in India, based here in Bangalore, so you might see a few of my colleagues uh, from Solutions IQ. There's at least one of you in the room that, uh, that is here. We'd love to meet you and share everything we know about Agile. Let me, uh, I'll tell you a little bit. Here's a little bit. My, my partner, Chris Wagner, who's a, who is, I actually, we both work for Solutions IQ now, but at the time we invented this practice together, neither one, we were both working, we were actually consulting at a global nonprofit called World Vision. Um, which is, has their US, their U.S. headquarters based near a home, home near, near Seattle. We worked on what you're going to, I'm going to present to you today at World Vision, and then we went off and did our separate gigs for a while, and then we rejoined um, about a year and a half after that and worked together for, um, for about a year and a half at General Motors Corporation in Detroit, where we really honed a lot of these practices, and I'll show you a couple pictures of those things at work. Um, a little bit more about me, I, um, I have actually had the great blessing of working in India for most of the last year here in Bangalore and have traveled all around. I absolutely love working Agile in India. I think the future of Agile is actually here in India. It's been one of the great blessings of my life to work here. The zest for learning, the comfort with chaos and ambiguity in the, in the traffic and out, out, you know, if you've ever been in line, you're like, like if you've ever been in a big crowd going to a temple, you know how things just adapt like crazy, people get to what they need to do <laughs> and they move on. And that, that, that actually bleeds off into, into people's work. They work that way too. So I was, I was actually disappointed this morning that I'm like the only guy I've seen here that is wearing a kurta today. I am not wearing this to be gimmicky. I am wearing this because I love them, right? If uh, I see Diana in the back, Diana is, and I both come from the same part of the United States in the Pacific Northwest. Average temperature is 11. If it gets much above 27, we get angry and cranky. So days like today, when it's probably going to be, what, 32, 33, or something like that, this is like perfect. I wish people should wear these everywhere all the time. So, so tomorrow, wear your kurta. Don't, you don't have to look nice for people here. You just have to be awesome. All right? All righty. OK, let's go past there. All right. So what's, before we get into this, before you get into this, let me talk about a little bit about what we talk about when I say a program. So a lot of you work on, you, you've been, if you've worked Agile before, you get working on a team, and you work, and maybe you're completing a project, or you're building a few features. But then we have this concept called a program. And you know, after a while, you've been working Agile, other teams are going to be doing stuff, too, along the same lines. And maybe some of those teams are not going to be Agile. Maybe some of them are doing waterfall. Maybe some of them are pure infrastructure support teams. They could be all over the map. They could be marketing. They could be sales. They could be manufacturing, customer support. If you're, de if you're, de you're delivering a whole massive suite of a whole product, let's say if you, were, if you were building a whole new product line, I've been involved in things where they're actually building a new car, mm -hmm. Right? That's a whole program. It has multiple teams. And that's what we mean when I'm talking about program management. Things that might in include as, 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 as little as three or four, maybe 20, 30 teams or more. So, um, and whenever we, we start working across programs, even if you've, 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 you've done things and you've got this great Agile team working, you feel great, all of a sudden you, you start bumping into things. Other teams you have dependency on, right? 
um, other people creating requirements for you that you don't know about that all of a sudden you get surprised because your product owner di didn't even know. So one of the, uh, one of the rationales that, that, that traditional waterfall approaches to delivering says is, well, the way, the way we know everything, because we need to know all these dependencies, we have to know all these things, and the way we need to know about it is to plan them all and plan them all up front. And if something goes wrong and we missed a dependency or there's a requirement that didn't, know, didn't pop up, well, then, th then we did insufficient planning. We didn't plan enough, right? And so that's, that's, that's what was a typical approach. And that's how we get all these things, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't do good on our work breakdown structure and blah, 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 and all that stuff. Um, when, we, when a change, somebody changes their mind or comes up with a great idea, all of a sudden we have to do a change request and see how that bleeds through the plan. The other thing, I, I, and you've been in this thing, where all of a sudden these late arriving issues, some big surprise comes up, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we got to deliver late, or we have to death march right for a month and to be able to finish it, things like that. It also just is per, per what we carry into Agilist, that way of working puts the focus on the project manager as, the, as like the filter of information, right? And so I've been in a lot of situations where there's all of a sudden, if I'm a project manager and they're looking to me like I'm the one that's actually delivering all this software. I start gaming the information. Maybe I'm not going to reveal this stuff, or maybe I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna silently hate this other guy that in, that, that 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 has a dependency, and again, make him look bad later. Right? So there's a lot of this stuff that is just natural because people want to be successful on their own stuff. So the, the other thing, because we do all this plans and we got those frameworks, and we'll show you over. We don't have a simple way, or it, it, there's no simple way. In the past, we know of, of how do you talk about a system of 20 or 30 teams working to de together to deliver something? We don't have any simple way of doing that, and we'll try to explore that. The traditional ways that we have, you know, I've been on so many projects where the first thing the project manager does is they announce a weekly issues meeting, a weekly issues call, and we're going to call up and discuss issues, right? Nobody knows what an issue is, but. But we meet every day and we call it, we talk about them, right? We have steering committees, status reports, right? And, and, and again, the focus then on all these things is on the person that's doing the reporting, not the people that actually have to deliver. So this is like we're in this schedule reporting focused way of working, and it's not very simple. That way, there's no, there's no incentive for teams to collaborate together, okay? I'm just focused on my component. Right? If my component is awesome, I've done my job for the day. Right? My component works. This other guy, he didn't, you know, he didn't read my spec. Right? He didn't read my spec enough, so that's his problem and it's his fault. Doesn't, and it, so, so there's really no incentive out of the box to collaborate. And then the thing we all love, because there's no other reason to do Agile, right, is that we're improving. We're looking at, always looking at what we do and seeing how, how can we improve the way we're working. All right. All right. So we end up with this big thing. You know, look at the street. You know, look at the street. There's some event coming in here. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to take a detour. Do I take the detour? Uh, or there's, there's you know, VIP parking and team parking are pointing in the same direction. And I got an ambulance in there. And I actually didn't even notice this until last night, right? Is that, that way back here, see this thing? That's the starting line for whatever happens. Like, and look at this morass of stuff I have to go through. You know, I don't even know what this means. It says front caravan. So I got three things pointing in the same direction. This going over there, oh, lead vehicle. I better be one of those if I even want to get to the start line. So uh, there's all this stuff, and we have all this stuff that, 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 that just appears often out of the blue. One of those signs could pop up like, oh, security update on the system software. Wow. Things could appear out of the blue, and I don't have quick visibility into that as a big group of people if I follow traditional means of reporting and doing stuff. All right, so let's look. Even in Agile, we've developed some traditional ways of doing things, right? So a lot of you have heard, if you've worked on Agile teams, and wow, if, uh, if maybe we have three or four teams working together, maybe we ought to do a scrum of scrums, right? And a scrum of scrums now looks like a whole bunch of people getting together <laughs> once or twice a week. And maybe they go through the standard questions. I've actually been in Scrum of Scrums where people just get together and say what's on their mind, right? They don't, they don't actually don't follow format. And, um, but that's, this is one, w it's, it's, it's one way that people do things out of, out of the box. It, one thing it does is it gives you face-to-face, -face, gets the people, 
gets the people together. But it works great as long as all these teams are scrum, right? If they're all scrum teams. Now if I have to, you have to have some other team that's doing waterfall and maybe they're in a different location, those, those people are gonna have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about when I invite them into this thing. It also assumes that you know, we're scrum teams, oh, we're all great cross-functional teams, right? We don't have anybody focusing on a single component. So now, the, the thing is, one of the things of Scrum and Scrums is actually in the Scrum canon, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Go look up in the Scrum guide, look at core Scrum, there's nothing that's to type Scrum is Scrum. So nobody, there's, we really don't have any set practices. So we don't know, what does the Scrum of Scrum look like? What do we actually have to make visible? Right? What do we have to talk about? All right, another way we create visibility is these artifacts called a release burn up or a release burn down. Looks wonderful. I can show where I am delivering a release in a, to a bunch of teams against a milestone and see where I'm going to make it. If you're, a, pro, pro, if you're a, a product owner or an executive that wants to see going on, it's really quick visibility into these things. And it tells me whether, whether given my work in progress, you know, what I've gotten done, are we going to make this thing? All right, the thing it doesn't make visible are what are all those, those dependencies? What's gonna be a threat, all right? If, 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 if something happens, right now I might see a little, I, might, I could see a little blip in the burn down, but it's not gonna tell me what's going on or how, it's, how is a team of people we can work through that. And it, uh, it gets, it actually, it's typically supposed to be updated at the end of the sprint. In my experience with a whole bunch of teams, they don't even do that. So you're always, you're, if you're a scrum master in charge of these things, you're always beating people up trying to figure out what got done. And then we go up to a different level. There's a program dashboard. Things great, right? Executives love this. Wow, I can, I can just click around and I can look at the release burn up for all my different teams and see what's going on. Um, and, and I can get all kinds of metrics, like how many bugs are they throwing, how many new is issues have come up. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. And, um, you're right, and then I can see across a whole bunch of programs how I can get stuff done. The other thing, it, it, the thing with these things is it creates, it creates a means where I can just sit in my office, right? And I can just click from team to team and see, see everything see everything that's going on. I don't, you know, I don't have to go out and walk around. I'll just sit here with my team. So for the people actually working, there's, there's, there's no face-to-face, -face, which we know is the most effective way to communicate. And these people start managing uh, each other with a dashboard instead of, instead, of, uh, instead of talking to each other. And then we've got this, all right? Here's this great, nice package solution, all right? Right, here's, here's just, this is just one example, all right? There's scaled agile framework. You have trouble coordinating across a whole bunch of different teams? Here it is, there's your solution right there, right? So, right, and, and so they've got, they've got practices in there, you know, the release train planning sessions, they've got certain practices in there. And it uses Scrum of Scrums, so it's built into SAFE. Um, the other thing is that there's, there's no, you know, again, unless you're a scrum team, there's no, prescribed, um, there's no prescribed level of visibility other than scrum and scrums, and there's no, you know, handling emergent dependencies and things like that. You're depending on scrum and scrums to do that, but nobody really knows what that means, right? We don't, we, we really don't have a set of practice. And what happens if you've got a dependency on something that sits outside of the release train? Right, somebody that has no clue. Safe? What's safe, right? And the other thing that's missing in here is the, the thing we said before is simplicity, right? Like, the, like look at that picture. I don't want to harp on safe too much, but, right? You have trouble, you, you just forget, forget you know anything about Agile. Forget you know, you know anything about Scrum. And I'm gonna walk up to you and say, you having trouble with cross team dependency and communication among 20 teams? Here, do that, right? Yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> Isn't it this big picture, right? All righty. So our, our measures of effectiveness, all right, we've seen these things before. Potentially shippable software, increasing value, great, that's all wonderful. But I can measure those in the team level. But when I'm look, working across the program level, I gotta look at other things that might be missing, right? Can I see, do I have a visual control across a whole lot of different teams? that can give me, that can actually not only give me information, but actually can create a means, uh, create a medium for us to have a conversation very quickly about what's going on. Are other teams, one team's blocking another? 
do I, all right, or do I have a simple way of doing that? Do I have a lightweight means of communication? And do I have every ways of we can all be improving, right? Right? Everybody's been on a big program where all of a sudden somebody's doing a death march at the end, right? Even I've been on ad, it's, it's like agile teams. It's like a, uh, that I'm working with at a client right now that are death marching because they didn't have these means of, of managing dependencies. Um, and so then people get unhappy, right? When they at the end, nobody wants to do do deal with this torturous stuff at the end. Amazingly, a lot of this is where, as team members, taking these things on are really valuable in how you can show your executives the value, the value of, what you, of what you're doing with Agile. Horrible, this is like the worst example I could think of. Um, I was at this big client, great big, huge multinational firm, right? And um, I did, we did a big program retrospective and the team members are like, you know, it was clear that, um, that they, they, they had a nine month journey ahead of them and already everybody was like oh my god I'm never gonna be able to go home you know and so I we put up all this on the wall and I looked at the executives there and I said you know it looks to me like you're about to go on a nine-month death march all right and they didn't know what a death march was I'm like oh my god we'd never do that to people and I said okay a death march is pretty much everybody is going to be working here nights and weekends for the next nine months and they looked around at each other and go yeah that's pretty much it Okay, that, 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 but that was their reality, that they couldn't live any other way. So what we want to do is introduce something really simple of what we know as our core Agile practices for letting the, doing something really simple to give everybody an entree of how you can actually, right in the middle of a program, introduce some Agile practices and get things going well. All right, and here's how we're going to start. So this is the simplest form <laughs> of what I call a program impediment board, or we just call it a program board. Okay. Here's just two teams, right? Two, two swim lanes here for one team, one, two, and one line across the middle. And we're going to do a stand-up every day. And we're going to look at things on one, uh, on, on one line. And what we're going to listen for is, I'm going to listen to the stand-up. Is, some, is something somebody else going to be doing potentially blocking me? Right? Or is somebody else, something's doing, going to block me today? And we're just going to make those in obstacles and impediments visible. Potentially in blocking, we're going to put, oh, this, this team is potentially going to get blocked, team number one. We're going to put a sticky right there. Wow, they're blocked right now on something. Then I'm going to, because I, can, I know what's going on, because I'm listening to what other people in the room are saying, I can listen and I can know, wow, somewhere two, three, five, six weeks down the line, somebody's going to do something that's going to break something of mine or it's going to, or it's going to block me. And I'm just going to make that visible right here and we'll show you how that pans out in a few examples. So simple, and then, so, and then we'll do this in the context of a stand-up, a program stand-up, that we might do, we might do a two or three times a week, sometimes you're getting close, maybe you do one every day, right? And we're just gonna answer, oops, I keep clicking this, thinking this works, and it doesn't. All right, we're gonna ask four questions. And they're very similar to stand-up questions. What's the team done since we were here last? What are they going to do next? But then we're going to add a couple other questions. We're not just going to say where you're blocked. We'll say, all right, is there anything blocking this team now? Is there anything putting something in this team's way? And we're all going to add one more question is, are we about to put something in somebody else's way? Right. So if we dig out, out of those, it, it, it's in, in, as when you're sitting inside of this with a, maybe 20 or 30 teams, your listening is different. You're not just saying what's going on with me in your nice cozy little team. You really have to actively listen. So what's, what's our team done since we last met? And if you're in the room, you're really actively listening to, wow, is this team doing something? Maybe this team is doing something that's going to make my life better. Or maybe this team is doing something that's going to block. It's going to block me today, right? Same thing. What are we going to do next? 
right? I'm building, I'm gonna releasing this component. Happens all the time at my current client. Wow, the team is thrilled. We're gonna release this new component, right? Not knowing that they're gonna break something else somebody else is gonna release. So I'm listening for this stuff, right? And if I hear it, I make it visible. If it comes in my hearing, I make it visible. I put a sticky on the board. I'm potentially gonna get blocked. It's very, very simple. No status reporting, no explanations. I just make, make the thing visible. Then we really actively get into this. Are we gonna put something in somebody else's way? Okay, or has somebody put something in our way right now? Right, I might block something now by somebody something else is doing. What, who, can, who can guess what the most common thing, common answer to that question? You're on a team. What's the most common way something gets put in your way? Changing the web service. Changing the web service. That's one. That's one. There's actually a much more common one. Huh? CI. Right. See the CI. Right. What about the CI? Yeah, that could be one thing. I think there's one more, one more simple one. It's like the people everybody love to hate in their organization. Change it's, request? No, 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 no. You're thinking, right? We need a new server, <laughs> it, right? This piece of infrastructure or this thing blew up. When you said CI, I immediately meant CI is down, right? It's the most common thing that, that pops up on a lot of teams. We can't move forward because we don't have this piece of infrastructure. It's not available. So all, everything you mentioned is true. In my experience, that's the most common one, right? It's the one we, and we community don't mention it because the one we, uh, we take for granted all the time. All right, so let's keep going. And then likewise, are we gonna put something in somebody else's way? Do we know we're doing something, right? All righty. <coughs> so, a couple warnings. So we're, gonna, we're actually gonna, we're gonna do a stand like, up like this in a minute. We run this like a stand up, right? Just like any other stand up. You be there, you be on time, stay focused on the three questions. And this works, all right, I've done Standoffs with 20 teams where we get done in 15 minutes. If people focus on those questions and just make their impediments visible, right? We don't try to solve, right? This is because you're doing it across sometimes 20 or 30 teams that never had visibility into their stuff before. It's gonna create emotions and anger and panic, right? <laughs> right? And you're gonna have competing agendas. The point of the doing this is to get that visible and to get it out in the open. So here's an example. This is actually at World Vision, the, the organization I worked at, where we started working this. And um, in this, this example, right, we actually started out with only four teams here. And in this example, we put, we put actually, this didn't have a whole lot of current obstacles, only one. These are all potential obstacles. But you can see, because this turns into a game. And the game I'm playing, because they, they put current impediments here, Current blockers, things that are not potentially blocking, the game you're playing is to prevent the stickies from going over the line, right? I don't want that sticky. If I can do anything to clear that impediment, like clear that dependency beforehand, then I'm winning the game. And this, they've almost won the game. When I started working this at World Vision, this organization, that was somebody, you mentioned web services. That was, I started out with a web services team. They had a whole bunch of different customers. They also had IT, right, where they get infrastructure from. And this got so popular, people started coming to this and saying, wow, I'm getting, just by listening to this, I'm getting visibility into things I didn't have before, on things potentially blocking me, more teams started coming. We didn't even have to invite them, they would just show up, right? So now, now look, at we, what do we got, four, we, it looks like we got maybe nine or 10 there, right? And then we expanded and there, we had 12 at World Vision, right? So that just, this is, it gets very viral. If people see simple means they can get visibility, Keep it simple, people want to join. You're not giving them a framework or anything like that. You're just saying, come join the conversation the way we're having it. Okay? All right. Here's an extreme example. <laughs> but this is, let me tell you the story. So this is at General Motors, right? And we went in and none of, basically none of the teams, you see, you can't even see them all. Uh, there, were, there were at the end 23 teams 
major program, all right, this is in the OnStar division of General Motors. They've got, they've got all these different components. They're very, very component-based in their approach. None of the, what you're seeing up there are Agile teams, right? They, they were just kind of starting to learn that stuff, but we wanted to get going, and this is we introduced at the program level. And the program manager, because they were, they were the program manager for this whole initiative, because they were actually, at the time we joined them, about two and a half, three months away from launching, maybe a little longer, but not much longer. He said, everything is a potential obstacle at this point. We're close. And so what he did was he said, all right, I don't want to see potential. Uh, everything is a potential obstacle now. So he made all, those, all, the, all the project managers basically to make all their work visible. Like every, everything was a potential blocker. And that's why you see all this stuff down here, right? And everything, and here's all the work in progress. Remember, the, none of these people are agile, so we're not enforcing WIP, but we're just making it visible and having this conversation. 23 teams, we got through it in 20 minutes every morning. People would, the program managers would show up. We were starting to do this every day, all right? It worked really, there's to do, right? Work in progress, you see they've got a things, few things literally blocked up here. Okay, 20 plus teams, 20 minutes or less. Um, and this really helped them, so they, this project delivered on time. And this is in a division that was renowned for not delivering anything of what they pro promised and, and, doing, and, and doing it really late in the midst of people death marching for months. And so this was, this is, we got this, establishing this visibility, we got it on time. And, um, and that's because of the visual cues people had. Executives could walk in, they, could, they just walked in and looked. Um, Let's kind of skip over some of this stuff. So here's one of these things at work. People showed up there at 9 o'clock every morning. There's a few people there, right? There's actually a VP, right? Actually found this so useful just to listen to what was going on that she started showing up to this thing. Just 15 or 20 minutes every morning. Here's the program manager. Here's one person on his staff or a person on a web team. Somebody writing web services. There's all kinds of legacy stuff from other sites of GM, and, and that's I could you know, I, we would have 23 people in this room doing the stand up every morning across 23 teams. Um, interestingly enough, we, we started working with this and tried starting establishing a, co a program a kanban, a program level kanban, right, which worked pretty well. But a, they actually went, you know, it was it got so complex. They kept they even though they had this big program level kanban that would trace flow and try to trace cycle time across 23 different teams, they always kept the impediment board going because it was such a useful little thing. All right. So let's try this ourselves. <laughs> let's try it. All right. So let me give you a little instructions. We are going to simulate, I'll get, get some volunteers, and we're going to simulate something that requires a whole bunch of different teams. And we are going to produce and operate a New Orleans restaurant for a night from New Orleans in the USA, right? So I have to, so when I, when I say, say let's come up, I need 18 volunteers, right? And you'll see across here, right, we have teams. There's a team producing vegetables. And you guys sitting near the wall, you're going to want to move. <laughs> That's, we're going to be over there, right? So, so there, we have a team producing right, vegetables. Now, now, New Orleans food is known for being extremely unhealthy, good for your soul, not good for your body, right? So, um, so but, but vegetables are such, you wouldn't think about it, but the, the, they have a thing called the trinity. Uh, it's like the holy trinity in Cajun food. So veggies are really important. We have a meat team, all right? This is a, definitely a non-veg cuisine. Right, seafood and, and roux, which is a sauce that's a base sauce of every, almost every, every, every New Orleans thing, piece of food. And then we produce some finished products. Gumbo, jambalaya, red beans and rice, pogoi sandwiches, right? Those are different those are kinds of New Orleans food. Then we have to plate. We're at a restaurant. We have to create this gorgeous plate. And people get done eating, we're going to wash the dishes, right? So we're going to simulate this thing. So what I've got, and I'm going to introduce Harish. Harish is, Harish is the sous chef, right? You know, sous chef is, you know, the person that creates sauces, and he's usually the second ranking person in here. Now I have to teach you. What I'm going to have is we have, for your volunteers, I'll have an envelope, right? In the envelope, it gives, there are two pieces of paper. It gives you a summary of what your team is, right? And it gives you a script of what you're going to report for your stand-up, right? There are, every team has two members. 
So you'll see, like for instance, there's a veg one and veg two. If you read it, you will notice that, that in the United States, New Orleans and that part, especially people where, where, where this kind of food originated from, have a very particular kind of dialect, right? They talk Cajun style. For instance, the, if you have any word that ends in T-I-O-N, right? Right? I, it has a distinct accent. Like, for instance, if we go through in our scrum team and we do a sprint, we don't do an iteration, we do an iteration. Or, right? or if you read Diana's book, right, and you do read Diana's, Diana's book, right, and you're, you're you at the end of a sprint, you're not, you're doing a retrospection, right, right, right. If you're connecting the database to the back end, what are you doing? Huh? Connection. Oh, I didn't think of connection. I was thinking of integration, right? <laughs> right? All right. So you'll see there's, a, there's, I put a lot of this dialect. Don't feel you have to try to pronounce it, but if you want it, it makes it fun and it makes it more meaningful. It make, puts you there. All right. I need 18 volunteers. Do you want to come up and help? And there is, right? Oh, we didn't make one for me. All right. So you will have, get your envelope and Get your chef hat. <laughs> like that. Okay? I think we we got enough people? I think we might need more. And come on over. And you might wanna if you can't see, come on over and we'll we'll do this together. Come on over. Now open up your envelope and look at what your team is and read your script. Okay? Come on over. And, and if you're in the other side of the room, yeah, come on over and stand. We'll do this as one nice happy group. Right? All right. Open up your envelope. Look at what your team is. Right? Everybody's kind of spread all around. Come on, come on closer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, Harish. Harish. Stickies and pens in my bag. Bring bring my bag over. <gasps> no, 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 no. There are two members, two members, uh, just two members, two gumbo, right? Where's your other, where's your team, where's your teammate? Who's got, who's got the other gumbo? See, there's your buddy. Okay. Rue. Or, or if you want to say it, 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 if you want to say it right, it's Lu. It's Lu. All right. Got stickies in, here in the side. There's a bunch of pens. Forgot about that. Sorry. All right. Let's just pile them out here. All right, I'm gonna need some room here. I gotta need some room here. All right, <coughs> and here's a bunch of pens and we'll use it, we'll have fine impediments. All right, here we go. Everybody know, everybody is red. Everybody is red, their thing. Whoops, hat's falling apart. First impediment is that we don't have, our hats aren't good enough, right? In fact, I'm not going to go hold this. My hat, I've got to fix my hat here. I've got to have my hat. All right? All righty, here we go. So here we go. We're ready to crack. We're ready to get cooking. So let's, we're doing our stand up before we start. All right, first veggie team. Where's our first member of our veggie team? Where are you? All right. When you give what's up with get what's up with, give us your give us your st share with your stand up. Correct. Okay. Uh, Talk loud. We can't hear. Apart from a standard preparation work, we picked uh, 50 pounds of dry red beans uh, in preparation for a big run on red beans and rice. Uh, we've got a bit of extra. Uh, we've got a big batch of okra that's available today, and that is the special. Oh, so we 
got a potential, potential impediment there. All right, so grab that. Grab that. You got a sticky, right? Right down the impediment. Yep, right down the impediment. And it, I don't think, that didn't sound like it was blocking you today. Like you can still keep chopping. It's chopping. It's just slowing you down. So let's, let's, put it, let's put it above the line there, all right? So it's potentially blocking. All right, meat. Where's the meat? First meat team. Go for it. Andui. Andui? Yeah. <laughs> For the gumbo and jambalaya. Uh, today we're making the meat market to get a whole lot. Uh, what? How to say it? I haven't been to New Orleans. Ah, a so. whole lot of poulet. <laughs> anybody know what that is? Chicken. Chicken. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> I actually did it. I almost thought, do I want to do this in India or not? Well, yeah. But everybody said to do it. So nothing is on our Nothing's way. blocking you? Yeah, All right. We are heavy team, not blocking anybody else. All right. <laughs> Great. Seafood. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what did we do yesterday? We iced 500 pounds of oysters, and in addition to shelling a whole lot of shrimp, Ooh. Not one shell is going to be found on those babies, guaranteed. <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> so what are we going to do today? Uh, we're anticipating taking delivery of a new batch of crawfish. <coughs> the latest batches of have all arrived with bad attitudes. So oh. sorting them is going to take time. Crawfish, big pincers, like big grab you and stuff. Yeah. Right, that's going to hurt. <laughs> right. All right, so that might go slow. All right, anything blocking you? Nothing on our way. Uh, are we putting anything on anyone else's way? The chef, the chef make bhavir. <laughs> Here we go. The, uh, the chef make a bhavir. The chef make a bhavir. Yeah. He's, he's upset. Yeah, he's frowning. Them green trout has been too green lately. lately. Not so much for black and bass. All right, the green trout is looking kind of green, right? It's not too good. It might be spoiling, so we might be blocked okay. there. Might might not be able to produce black and trout. All right, so there's a potential impediment. All right, so we want to write that down. All right, who's next? Yep. Oh. Yeah. It's us. Okay, so what did we do, or do yesterday? Um, we made a whole lot of brew. <laughs> and what will we do today? Make a whole lot of roof. All right. <laughs> Great. Anything in your way? Apart from getting pulled into all these meetings, keep making roof is, you know, you're never done. There's a lot of roof to be made. And we just keep getting pulled into more and more meetings. And hello, how are we going to make that roof? All right, all right. We got it. You, a lot of meetings. All right. Okay. That doesn't sound like an impediment to me, so let's, let's kind of keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Who's next? Uh, gumbo, yum. Who's, where's, where's our first gumbo iteration? Louder, louder. Yesterday we made up a lot of gumbo herbs for that vegetarian convention that came through today. Try it again, vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today we're going to cook up plenty of gumbo a lot of gumbo for the real Cajun lovers. Yeah, the real ca Cajun lovers that love meat in their gumbo. Because, yeah, we ran out of raw yesterday. That's, where is, that's ah. the reason you need to make more of them. Not many meetings. People got a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second time this week. The raw team needs to guarantee that they can make the raw. Are we putting anything in other scheme today? Not today, at least. All right. Say it again. Lou. 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 Yeah, they're, they're close. All right. <laughs> Good. All right, so now we got an impediment. All right, you're blocked. Yeah. You ran out of roux. So, so we need one up here. Right? Put one right up there. All right, jambalaya. Yeah. Go for it. Oops. Yeah, your hats are dangerous. <laughs> Very good. So 
so we had to slow down. What do we do today? Back to cousin living. Folks, lots more jambalaya to be made. It's <laughs> good. Is there anything in our way? A veggie team can't keep enough trinity. They can't make enough trinity. That's onion, celery, and uh, green peppers together to keep up with us. So they keep whining about their cutting tools. How hard can it be to chop vegetables? Yeah. Really? I know. <laughs> all right, all right. But you, uh, it sounds like. Are we putting any, anything in anyone's way? We might not have enough jambalaya to go around today because of the vegetable crop. Right, so we got a potential impediment there. You better put that, but right, sticky, put it down there. All right, red beans and rice. Second iteration. Nope. Oh, no. Oh, you only I did one iteration. Oh. You did it. Fine. Right. So traditionally, red no. beans and rice takes all day to make and just sits there and simmers all day. So back, and people traditionally did their laundry in New Orleans on Monday. So red beans and rice was great on Monday because you could just sit there and do the pot, let the pot simmer while you were, while you were doing your laundry. So now traditionally, you go to New Orleans, you go to a restaurant, red beans and rice on Monday. So it's like the red beans and rice day. <laughs> That's it. All right. So we're cool there. Po boys. Yeah. So what did we do yesterday? Those vegetarians kept us mighty busy with all their weird requests for veggie po boys. They're nuts. Who are the vegetarians? Really? <laughs> Done? <laughs> what did we do today? Uh, back to Viande de Bete. Beef. All right. Did I pronounce it right? Yep. Yeah. Is anything blocking us? Uh, yes. Where is the viande de bete? We don't have enough for uh, beef po' boys. Are oh. We that? Not enough beef for po' boys. Okay. Yeah. Are we putting anything in anyone's way? Uh, no viande de bete, no po' boys for the plating team. Great. So let's do one right here. Plating. Where's plating? Yeah. Okay. We're going to we're gonna ramp it up here a bit. Ah, uh, what do we do today? No, what's this ah, ils sont contents. That means the team is very happy. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yesterday we found a truck uh, full load of uh, compostable plates. So, all those happy vegetarians will be happy. And uh, my team is very happy. So, we are back to using the normal real plates. So, there is not enough work. But yes, we are. We could not get enough of PO boys. Po boys. Po boys. Po boys. Uh, to keep my people happy. Oh. And the red beans and the rice team, they have decided they will only work on Monday. So we don't know how we are going to produce it. Oh boy. Vegetarian. There's a blacker there. Then. Yes. All right. Go for and it. And our risk is uh, for the rice team and the red beans team. They will only work on Monday. Yeah, that's a, I know you better put that up. There's a blocker, right? All right. Dishwashers. Where are the dish? Where's the dishwashers? Where's my dishwasher? Dishwashing one. Oh, nobody picked the. All right, sous chef, sous chef, sous chef. This is like. This is, this is servant leadership at work. The soup chef is going to wash dishes today. <laughs> All right. So we washed dishes yesterday. Today we will wash dishes. <laughs> and what is blocking us? Team is very low on morale. We are washing, washing, washing. All right. All right. Good. All right. There's our first iteration. Now we're running a little behind. So let's go through our second iteration real quick. All right. Two. Next, vegetable. Yeah, we picked uh, yesterday uh, for a few versions of okra, and we found uh, some big problems. What's up? What's up? They were all uh, too slimy. They're slimy. 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 slimy okra. Ick. Yeah. Nobody likes slimy okra. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I... What we're going to do today, uh, we will do our best to make up uh, enough to for 
All right. All right. So, oh, oh, by the way, I'm the chef, and I got you new knives, so we can remove that blocker, yes. right? But, but it sounds like we got to put a blocker up there because your okra is all icky and slimy. It's funny. I've had okra in India, and it's all perfect here. You, you know, it's like really difficult to make in New Orleans, but here it's perfect. All right. All right. All done. Next, yep. meat. Uh, meat. Meat number two. Uh, yesterday we prepared chicken and cut ingredients for this week's dishes. We also slow roasted lots of beef to meet the demands of the Povois team. Uh, what we will do today? We are cutting up and spicing lots of chicken and salmon for uh, gambo and jambalaya. Is there anything in our way? The backlog of the jumbo team is causing a lot of meat to stack up unused. Oh man, right, so you got all this meat that might expire that expire because we weren't using it for gumbo for all those crazy vegetarian gumbo eater, eaters. All right? So there's a there's a there's a potential blocker there. Seafood, next. What did we do yesterday? A lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> we waited around for the crawfish delivery which never came. Oh what are we going to do today? The green trout is just right now. Back to work on black, blackened bass. Blackened bass, yum. <laughs> is there anything Trust else? me on that. Um, anything in your way? What can we do to substitute the crawfish? We need help from the chef. No oh boy. All right, I'll have to think about that one. All right, let's go next. The next is a routine. Yeah, as, as you, you guys are aware, it's a so you got an impediment we're like for making rooks, rooks, and rooks. Rook. <laughs> and in the second iteration, what we did yesterday, we met with the chef to discuss the quality <coughs> problems we are having. More meetings means less rook. What we'll be doing Meaning today, again. do our best to make the rooks. Is there anything in our way? We are continuing to be distracted uh, by meeting with the people, wanting to review our rooks process. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, oh, one more uh, thing. Are we putting anything in anyone else's way? We are doing our best to make the rooks, but can't promise we can produce because of all the meetings. Yeah, fine, 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 fine. All these meetings, right? All right, so I'm going to work on you with your meetings. We're going to figure out why you're having meetings. See, sounds, this, yeah, just the thing. Like this comes up a lot when you go in programs. And you could be, somebody might be getting dra team dragged into some, archi some architecture meetings, <laughs> right? Or, 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 or the salespeople need a quick estimate or something like that. So this, but this doesn't happen until you get everybody visible, right? So this is why important. So I'm like keep making fun of him because he's meetings. But this is something real he's experiencing. So as a program manager, we're going to help him figure that out. <coughs> all right, all set? Jambalaya, real quick. Gumbo. Oh, gumbo. So what, what did we do yesterday? We made a lot of gumbo herbs for the restaurant con uh, convention that came through today. What will we do today? No okra, no crawfish. We are completely blocked. Ooh. We need help from the cabin chef. Is there anything in our way? Everything is in our way. We are completely blocked. Completely blocked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we putting anything in anyone else's way? The plating team will have a lot of uh, unhappy customers. That's, oh man. Okay, so put that up there. All right, next, red beans and rice. No, oh, jambalaya, sorry. Jambalaya, what did we do yesterday? Back to making the jambalaya the proper way. We have enough community now to keep working, thanks to Veggie team. And is there anything in our way now? Nothing in our way today. And are we putting anything in anyone else's way? Not really today. All right, woo! Right, love that jambalaya. That's actually my favorite. All right, red beans and rice. Uh, what we did yesterday, exactly nothing. The whisk team didn't have the beans ready. So we spent the day with the, like, working on our hair, destroying everything. Today, we are planning to do, we will start cooking the beans for the next Monday catch. And blocking us is the veggie team needs to start planning ahead to give us the appropriate time to destroy the beans. Red beans and rice require a lot of up and down. So <laughs> All right, all right, po boys, almost there. What did we do yesterday? We made all the po boys we could yesterday. What we will do today? Make 
everyone happy with the world? Is anything blocking us? Not as we know. Are we putting anything in anyone else's way? Not today. Plating. Alright, plating. What did we do yesterday? We made lots of happy new casual lovers with plates of plates. You want to spam? What will we do today? We'll keep subbing people, but we don't have enough to it. Is there anything blocking us? No gumbo, no red beans and rice, and now no dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and Kolaev, we are angry. What kind of joint is this? We need help from the chef. All right. Will we be putting anything in someone else's way? No, we won't, because soon we will not have any customer. <laughs> Dishwashing. <laughs> All right. All right. So one thing I'm going to announce to get one of these blockers out is I am announcing because we're fr I'm so frustrated with this red beans and rice situation that we've decided to outsource the red beans and rice team to the United States. So. <laughs> All right. All right. So quick, any questions on what you've seen so far? Really quick way to visualize: Are we blocked? Are we generated? And that's the thing with multiple when you do multiple teams not get into details. Visualize the dependencies and, and get people in conversation of them, but keep this really clear, right? Questions? Is there any significance between the lanes? Well, these are, the lanes are the teams, right? You just add number of teams. This, this is like, this is, the, yeah, very important. Blocked today, like we got to get an action and unblock it today, potentially unblock. And remember, the game you're playing is to prevent things from going from here to here. Remember? Get the game? If you prevent the, the potential blocker from becoming a real one, you've won. All right? Now, how do you know when this is working? In my experience, start out with a few teams. You know it's working when it grows. More people will show up. Other thing, other people in the organization will just show up to experience this thing, listen to the conversation, and they can get it in tune very simply and very quickly for what's really going on in a project. No status reporting, right? No writing status reports, no steering committee meetings, no big fancy metrics on utilization and blah, blah, blah. It's a real simple thing. Is there anything in the way of getting us done between the teams? All right? Uh, but if it's a globally distributed team, it becomes difficult. I mean, oh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I get, all right. Here's the thing. Don't let that get in your way. There are, you see, see you can go, and this is where I didn't cover this intentionally because there are a lot of presentations out there on how to do global stand-ups. This is no simple, no different than that. Get yourself a simple visualization tool. I can do a simple online whiteboard, things like that. Get webcams going. Use that simple stuff. We did this. I did this with 23 teams, some of them in India when I was in Detroit. Okay. Don't let that get in your way. I know it's easy, especially because big companies love to spend a m whole bunch of money on tr tools to try to make you do stuff. Keep it simple. If I can see you and I can see the board and have a conversation, then we can work together and get this out. Okay. N any other questions? We're running kind of late. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so do the program manager, I mean, project managers of those areas stay back? The people that can help clear the obstacles stick around and clear it. Okay. I didn't jump to program manager because I don't necessarily, they're not necessarily the ones. Get the people involved. And that's the thing across, the, you know, there could be hundreds of people on these teams, right? This gets real, only visualize who can help, who needs to help solve the problem when we get with them. Keep it very lightweight that way. Don't hold big meeting, hour-long meetings with 30 people. Just get what you need. All right, we've got people waiting to get in here, so we should go. Thank you for coming here today. The hats are yours. Okay, thank you.